A blessed day to all of us. I'd like to share with you about salmonella and its occurrence in foods of animal origin. I have no disclosures, and this is my simple outline to talk about salmonella, foods of animal origin, foodborne outbreaks, and I'd like to make a conclusion afterwards. Zoonotic diseases are defined as those illnesses which are transmissible from animals to humans and vice versa. And majority of diseases that affect man often come from animals. And there are many ways by which we can contract illness from animals. It can be through bites, but most commonly is through the food that we eat. And it has been found that 75% of foodborne illnesses are due to meat and poultry. Foodborne illnesses are a major health problem. They are often manifested by diarrhea. And according to the Philippine Statistical Yearbook, diarrheal diseases are among the top 10 causes of morbidity and death in the Philippines. In particular, diarrhea has been estimated to kill around 10,000 Filipino children every year. Salmonella has been found to be the third leading cause of death worldwide among foodborne diseases. In European Union and the USA, it has been found to be the second leading uh, cause for foodborne disease, second only to Campylobacter. Now, when it comes to host pathogen relationship, they have found that we can be able to group salmonella into three. We have the man host specific sal typhoidal salmonella, under which we have uh, two species, salmonella typhi and salmonella paratyphi. Then we have the animal host specific salmonella, uh, under which we have salmonella gallinarum, salmonella pulurum, which affects poultry. And then we have salmonella doblin of cattle, salmonella cholerae suis, which causes a typhoidal kind of illness in pigs. And when it comes to doblin and cholerae suis, it has been found that these are more pathogenic when they infect man. Now, the third group is the non-typhoidal salmonella, of which there has been more than 2,659 serovirus that has been identified, and all of them are considered to be potentially zoonotic. For the non-typhoidal salmonella, uh, we have two main species. We have Salmonella bongori, which, comes, which has been found to occur in cold-blooded vertebrates and the environment. And then we have Salmonella enterica, uh, under which the most famous ones are Salmonella enterica serotype typhimurium and Salmonella enterica serotype enteritidis. The Salmonella enterica serovirus is responsible for 99% of infection in man and animals. And then among the Salmonella enterica serovirus, the most widespread is Salmonella enterica serotype typhimurium. Our organism, Salmonella, is a very resourceful and very adaptive organism. It has been known to grow very well at room temperature because the range for its growth is from 7 to 47 degrees Celsius. Our organism is a facultative anaerobe, and that is why it can easily live inside the intestinal tract. Now, in addition, it has been found to be quite adaptive and it can thus infect 
a multitude of hosts. Now, in addition, our salmonella has been found to be quite immune evasive simply because it has evolved multiple mechanisms to evade the immune system of the host by just simply changing its flagellar components. As such, infection with the organism has resulted to the presence or existence of carriers. We are concerned with non-typhoidal salmonella because no vaccines has yet been developed against this non-typhoidal salmonella because there is a large variance among the strains and there is incomplete knowledge on the protective antigens that can be used for vaccine production. Salmonella are also good survivors. They can easily survive for some time in the environment, especially in soil and water. They can resist freezing and they can survive even better at negative 20 degrees Celsius than at negative 2 degrees Celsius. They can survive dehydration. They can resist dehydration for a long period of time, both in the feces and in foods of animal origin. They can survive for several months in salt, salted food, uh, smoked food, cheese, ripened, uh, ripened cheese. And this has been responsible for causing outbreaks of salmonellosis, these foods. When it comes to heat, it can easily be destroyed by heat higher than 70 degrees Celsius. And this is why pasteurization of milk is a very good method of uh, keeping your milk safe against salmonellosis. However, we are concerned with salmonella because it has been known to develop multi-drug resistance. And when it comes to multi-drug resistance, there are concerns about our superbugs, super salmonella, because 93.8 million foodborne illnesses have been attributed to salmonella, which is responsible for 155,000 deaths per year. And we are concerned, of course, because it would mean that these illnesses by salmonella that are drug resistant can be very difficult to treat. It has been found that salmonella tend to cycle in the environment. It occurs in the intestinal tract of both man and animals, and it can be excreted via the feces of infected individuals. So we are concerned, especially in areas wherein there is open defecation or where animals are just allowed to defecate anywhere, because this can be sources for contamination of soil and water. When other animals ingest the organism in the soil or in the water, then we can now have other animals becoming infected with salmonella. So as a result, we would now have more animals becoming carriers that would be excreting the organism via their feces and they would be contaminating the environment, the farm environment, the water, the soil. And as a result, there can be exposure of other animals to these contaminated surfaces, resulting to more carriers. And that's why it's so important to keep a salmonella-free farm. Feed is a very important vehicle for infection in several outbreaks involving herds of animals. In developed countries where feeds come from bone meal, fish meal, meat meal, 
feeds has been found to be a source for infection for the farm. Intensive rearing of animals can result to spread of the organism from one animal to another. Um, carriers that has been infected by the organism excrete the organism via their feces at the rate of 100 million per gram of feces. And with intensive rearing of animals, there is a spread, there is an ease in the spread of infection as animals are close in contact to each other. There would be a higher level of contamination of the feeds as well as the environment and the water. Now, when animals are transported to the abattoir, it's possible that stress during travel as well as holding in the slaughterhouse pens can result to increased level of infection. And this has been proven by several researches. Now, our organism, Salmonella, is a facultative anaerobe. And so when it enters, it is ingested, and it enters the intestine, it can invade the enterocytes of the intestine, and as a result, come now to be present in the intestinal tract of reservoir animals, such as mammals, birds, insects, and even man. Now, reservoir animals would then be sources of salmonella, and this can be foods of animal origins, such as meat, milk, eggs, and even seafoods and fish. People ingesting salmonella in the food would now come down with foodborne salmonellosis. Non-typhoidal salmonella, which usually comes from foods of animal origin, is a bacterial disease which is manifested by fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and sometimes vomiting. And the signs appear within 6 to 72 hours after ingesting the suspect food. The acute gastroenteritis is suffered by the individual for 3 to 5 days. However, there can be relapses for in their aid. There can be recurrence of symptoms, especially when an individual is stressed. It has been reported that 8.3 million cases of salmonellosis occur every year. Who are at risk? At risk would be the very young, the old, the senior citizens, and also the pregnant individuals. And particularly vulnerable would be persons with debilitating conditions, such as those who have cancer, who have uh, blood disorders, chronic infections, concurrent infections, those who have immunocompromised system, and gastrointestinal tract disorders. The infective dose of the organism can vary, but it has usually been found to uh, work within 10 to the 5 per gram. So that would be 100,000 organisms per gram. Now, that can easily be reached because fecal shedding is 100 million per gram of feces. So if food is contaminated with fecal matter and the organism has grown, then the infective dose can easily be reach. So as a result, foods of animal origin may be contaminated with fecal matter or during the processing, we can have contamination by salmonella of our foods of animal origin. And these are excellent vehicle of the organism. Very good media, very good for our salmonella to grow. Now, the greatest source for microbial contamination is the infected animal. And contamination can also come from human handlers as well as the environment. We will now talk about the occurrence of the organism in foods of animal origin. And in particular, we zoom in on dressed chicken coming from wet markets. 
we found that 20% of dressed chicken were positive for salmonella. Now, in addition, comparing makeshift stalls that were selling uh, chicken compared to permanent market stalls, we found a higher yield of salmonella isolation in Talipapa compared to permanent market stalls. We also found 18% of fresh chilled chicken being sold in markets to be positive for salmonella. And we related the occurrence of the salmonella to the environmental temperature inside the market that favored the growth of the organism and the longer length of time that the chicken was on display. Salmonella from dressing plants. We checked out four dressing plants and we found that 50% of them, two out of four, were positive for salmonella. Samples taken from these dressing plants were found to be positive for salmonella. And in particular, we were able to recover the salmonella in the pre evisceration and pre chill locations. And this is why we strongly advise the use of high chlorine uh, concentration in the chilling waters and in the wash water uh, what washing wa chicken so that we the level of salmonella contamination can be reduced occurrence in eggs uh, samples of eggs were taken and these were balut eggs and they were sampled and we were able to find that 9.17 percent contained salmonella we found that two adjacent towns had the highest isolation rates suggesting a widespread occurrence of uh, salmonella in the environment in these towns where the ducks were raised we have concerned in line with the presence of the organism in the duck eggs because of reports of foodborne salmonellosis in Pangasinan. In chicken eggs, we found a very low rate of occurrence of chicken eggs from the market. We are concerned, however, that uh, of for salmonellosis because of the fondness of many consumers for eating raw or not thoroughly cooked eggs. In general, eggs is a major ingredient uh, for cakes as well as egg sandwiches and thus can be a very good uh, major vehicle for foodborne disease outbreaks worldwide, particularly those implicating pathogenic salmonella species. The samples that we had for eggs were freshly laid. We are concerned, however, because very often eggs are stored for several days before consumption and if they are contaminated with salmonella then it's possible that salmonella can increase in number inside the egg so the contamination with salmonella can be due to the presence of cracks on the eggshell or it can be through vertical transmission from the mother hen to the egg undercooked chicken Undercooked eggs can be sources for salmonellosis, like poached eggs, soft boiled egg, and sunny side up egg. Foods uh, with raw or insufficiently heated eggs have also been linked to the occurrence of salmonellosis. And these uh, foods are homemade ice cream, Cesar salad, hollandaise sauce, eggnog, and homemade mayonnaise. In pigs, it was found that 33.3% of pork meat that uh, we sampled from markets in Laguna were positive for salmonella. And we observed that the occurrence of the salmonella was affected by the condition of the market, the level of cleanliness and condition of the surfaces in the meat stalls, and also the source of the slaughtered pigs. Now, the mesenteric lymph nodes were also sampled and they were found to be positive for salmonella. 
the occurrence of the salmonella was related to poor condition of the holding pens, longer length of time for holding the animals in the holding pen before slaughter, and in slaughterhouses wherein more pigs were being slaughtered, had a higher level of salmonella uh, contamination compared to slaughterhouses with lesser number of pigs being slaughtered. In cattle, 4% of soba's muscle, that's the choice, uh, the loin, choice loin cut of uh, meat in cattle were found to be positive for salmonella. And the occurrence of the organism was related to the poor condition of the abattoir, poorly constructed abattoir, the crowding of animals in the holding pens, poor hygiene practices of the butchers and dirty equipment, and the use of unreliable water supply. The mesenteric lymph nodes were also found to contain mesen salmonella. And uh, this was in another study, and it was related to the poor conditions in the abattoir. And it's likely that the salmonella increased in number while the animals were being held for a longer time in the holding pen before slaughter. In other animals, we found salmonella in 16% of rats sampled, and the salmonella was recovered from the cecum, the colon, and the small intestine. The salmonella that was recovered belonged to pseudogroup EG that is known to be pathogenic to man. And so presence of rats in the environment or in households contaminating our food can result to our food becoming positive for salmonella. 54.5% of fecal samples were also found to be positive for salmonella using conventional methods of isolation. By PCR, we found we were able to confirm 4.5% of the fecal samples for mice from mice were positive for salmonella. And once again, the presence of rodents, pests like mice, can be very important reservoirs for contamination of foods of animal origin and reservoirs for salmonellosis in the farm as well as in households. Dogs. We checked out dogs and we found that 42% of rectal swabs from dogs were positive for salmonella that were confirmed by PCR. Comparing the rate of infection of pet dogs with that of stray dogs, we found a lower rate in pet dogs compared to that of stray dogs. Another thing that we observe is that healthy dogs can be carriers and shedders of potentially zoonotic salmonella, contaminating the food and environment. And stress can be a very important trigger for increased excretion. In line with the amended Animal Welfare Act, uh, dog meat should not be even sold for human consumption. So it's not supposed to be food of animal origin. Unfortunately, there are many areas in the Philippines wherein dogs are being used for human consumption. In our law, only allowed for slaughter are cattle, pigs, goats, sheep, poultry, rabbits, carabao, and horse. Now let me talk about foodborne outbreaks in relation to foods of animal origin. There was this outbreak in Boracay where a nine tourists uh, got ill after eating seafood dishes and they were found to contain salmonella. In another outbreak reported there were 240 guests that were hospitalized after they ate adobong manok, which was a chicken dish Uh, serve at the 90th birthday celebration of the former First Lady Imelda Marcos in Pasig City. Then there was this outbreak in Bulacan which affected hundreds of people. And this was the appearance of the hospital that was swamped with many patients uh, after being affected with salmonellosis. So an investigation was conducted and it was found that in the kitchen 
where the food was prepared, chicken and dogs were roaming around. And possibly the source for the salmonella. Then in Tondo, 112 pupils came down with illness and it was found that the uh, salmonella may have come from the egg sandwiches, the hot dog, or the maiz con yellow that was served to the children in the canteen. In a wedding banquet, it was salmonella enteritidis was isolated from the pork adobo that also was found to have the highest uh, attack rate among the different food that was served at the reception. And then in a five-star hotel in Metro Manila, uh, there was a banquet. And then after the banquet, 70 guests were rushed to the hospital suffering from diarrhea and abdominal pain. So an investigation was conducted and it was found that the suspect food was steamed lapu-lapu with mayonnaise. So samples were taken from the patients and they were found to be positive for salmonella as well as the eggs that was used for making mayonnaise. So street foods. We are concerned with street foods because very often they are made of foods of animal origin. Our concern is that very often these street foods, as they are being uh, sold, uh, there is a lack of water, clean water, for hand washing and for utensil washing while the food is being sold or prepared. Unclean materials, unclean surfaces are being used in food preparation. There could be poor personal hygiene in food handlers, and there can be incorrect cooking as well as storage of cooked food. Now, in general, major causes of foodborne outbreaks in the Philippines have been related to the following. Inadequate refrigeration, foods prepared too long before serving, usually during a fiesta, Infected persons practicing poor personal hygiene, especially when they come out from the toilet without washing their hands properly, and inadequate cooking or heat processing. So in conclusion, the occurrence of salmonella in foods of animal origin has direct public health importance. We're in Meat and poultry accounts for more than 75% of reported foodborne outbreaks. If the meat is bought from the market and was allowed to stay at room temperature for a few hours and then it was inadequately cooked, then the risk of contracting salmonellosis increases. Direct and indirect cross-contamination can occur during slaughter and the lack of hygiene can increase the initial contamination of our foods of animal origin. By allowing food to stay at room temperature, we call that mishandling of the food because it promotes the growth of salmonella. Pets and rodents, take note, are potential sources of salmonella and that in general, the infective dose of salmonella can vary from one person to another. And this is the reason why ready-to-eat foods should never contain salmonella. And the presence would mean condemnation of the food. Now, the occurrence of salmonella in mesenteric leaf nodes indicate that although carrier animals may appear seemingly healthy, they can be good sources of contamination during transport holding and slaughter. And as a result, foods of animal origin may become contaminated. Care should be taken during evisceration and in particular, we need to point out that incision of the mesenteric lymph node should be avoided during post-mortem inspection simply because salmonella has been found to occur in the mesenteric lymph node and that can result to contamination of other parts of the carcass. 
The occurrence of salmonella in carry animals such as dogs, cats, mice, including, of course, our pets, their useful cockroaches, flies. These can be mechanical vectors that can facilitate the spread of contamination in the abattoir, in the market, and in our kitchen. So what can we do? Of course, we would like to avoid salmonellosis. And the first thing would be to avoid contamination because our foods of animal origin are good media for salmonella. So there comes in now the keeping things clean, avoiding contamination. Avoid time temperature abuse because this will prevent the growth of salmonella. So minimize keeping food at room temperature. And do not buy compromised meat, bocha, which is meat from double dead animals which may have died by due to salmonella. Lad, lad, these are uh, refrigerated meat, but close to ambient temperature or room temperature. And hot meat are meat that has not undergone meat inspection. Do not buy this meat. Usually they come from illegal slaughterhouses. And when it comes to cooking, make sure that you cook your eggs properly. When you want it poached, five minutes, sunny side up, three minutes on each side. Hard boiling, seven minutes. And if we have to serve eggs in nursing homes and hospitals, because we have here a vulnerable population, we need to ensure that the eggs being used are pasteurized eggs. And how long should you cook? Well, make yourself safe by cooking for your eggs for at least seven minutes. And of course, properly cook your meat. And when it comes to proper cooking of meat, uh, the range for temperature would be from 63 to 74 degrees Celsius. To check if your meat has been properly cooked, it would be good to make use of a meat ther thermometer that is then inserted inside the meat to check whether the heat of the cooking process has properly penetrated the meat. So the range of temperature is 63 to 74 degrees Celsius. So take note for leftovers, you will make use of a higher temperature. Let me quote Ecclesiastes 2, 24, 25. The best thing a man can do is eat and drink and enjoy what he has earned. This comes from God. Without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? Essentially, it is not good to worry that you will come down with salmonellosis when you eat your food. So may you eat happily ever after. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. So these are my references. And I hope we can talk again about salmonella in foods of animal origin. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Have a good day.